Ready? This week, we're in Scotland. We're starting off in Edinburgh, and then going west and north, uh, through the highlands, over to Oban, Isle of Mull, Iona, uh, Glencoe, around Loch Ness, and finally in Inverness. Our tour of Scotland began in the capital, Edinburgh. And the first thing we did there was visit the high point of the city, Edinburgh Castle. Built high up on a rock over 1,300 years ago, this is the fortified birthplace of Edinburgh. Inside the castle walls are the crown jewels of Scotland, a royal palace, a national war memorial, and the National War Museum of Scotland. Visiting here, it's easy to understand why this location was chosen to build a castle. From up here, you can see for miles in every direction. The castle sits at the top of a street called the Royal Mile, which is the main road running down the hill and through the Old Town. The Royal Mile was once the route that Scotland's royalty used to get from their palace at the bottom of the hill to the castle at the top. Even today, the street retains much of its medieval charm, mostly through architecture and monuments, like this one to Adam Smith, one of the fathers of modern capitalism. Along the Royal Mile, across the street from St. Giles Cathedral, Nikki found us a great apartment through Airbnb, with an awesome window that looked down on the street below. And for the Edinburgh portion of our trip, we were joined by three other travel friends. This is Nikki's friend's husband, Mike, who is temporarily working in Brussels. This is Steffi, who Nikki played field hockey with, and that is her friend, Colleen. Together, we spent the weekend doing Rick Steves walking tours of the city, eating haggis, and drinking lots of scotch. Not just drinking scotch, but learning to appreciate scotch. We arranged for a guy to come in and teach us all about Scotland's finest export. This is Ken Hanley, kilt and all, teaching us about all the different whiskies from the different regions of Scotland. And what could be a better post-whiskey tasting dinner than a stroll to the Christmas market and a nice grilled German bratwurst? Edinburgh was a lot of fun, but on Monday morning, Mike had to go back to work, Steffi and Colleen went to London, and Nikki and I rented a car and headed for the Scottish countryside, also known as the Highlands. On day one, we drove west across the southern Scottish Highlands. The countryside is green, quaint, and dotted with castles, including our first stop about an hour west of Edinburgh, Stirling Castle. So we still see traces of it here, but that's the last we have arrived at the legendary Stirling Castle. It's located in the middle of the country in the highlands, strategically high on a volcanic rock. So the castle itself can get sweeping views of the countryside. And it was home to Scottish monarchs for hundreds of years. It's long been said that he who controls Stirling Castle controls Scotland. Today, the castle is very well preserved the guide's very enthusiastic, and the castle is home to a very famous collection of tapestries. Yes, this is a castle, and there are tapestries, but if you are Scottish law, then I am Mickey Mouse! About 15 minutes down the road from Stirling Castle is another castle that didn't play a big part in Scottish history, but did have a small part in a certain movie. See if you can figure it out. We are the knights who say me. Our ultimate destination on day one was the coastal town of Oban, gateway to the Hebrides Islands and home to the Oban Distillery. We weren't able to squeeze in a distillery tour, but we did visit the gift shop and took home a delicious bottle of Oban 14 Scotch. We are in 
Oban. Yesterday we spent the day driving from Edinburgh to uh, Oban and uh, it was a delightful little trip. We stopped by uh, Stirling Castle and Dune Castle and now it is Tuesday morning and we are going to take a ferry over to the Isle of Mull. Mull is part of the Hebrides Islands just west of Scotland. It's the third biggest island in Scotland, and it's only accessible by ferry. The Isle of Mull and the Highlands in general seem to always be shrouded in fog. It's easy to see how the Romans thought this place was haunted. The first thing you see on your approach to Mull is this imposing castle. Set on a bluff overlooking the ocean, this is the actual ancestral homeland of a real person whose exploits in World War II spawned one of the most famous movie characters of all time. Bond. James Bond. Driving along some of Mall's 300 miles of coastline, you're bound to see some wildlife, including various types of hawks and deer. Mm -hmm. And while this region of Scotland is known for its seafood, not surprisingly, there's venison on every menu. But the star animal attraction of any trip to the Highlands is the Scottish Highland Cow, also known as the Hairy Coo. Would you like to give us a... are Scottish Highlanders. Also known as? Hairy Coos. And are they beef or dairy? They're cute. <laughs> On the other side of Mall, an even smaller ferry takes you to an even smaller island, the island of Iona. Only three miles long and populated by only a couple hundred people, this island is the birthplace of Christianity in Scotland. The island's abbey was established in 560 AD, and it thrived for hundreds of years despite its isolation and being the target of frequent Viking raids. Little Iona had only a handful of restaurants, no cars, lots of sheep, and a bunch of little hills that you could climb up to for great views of the ocean and the Isle of Mull off in the distance. Two ferries and one flat tire later, we were back on the mainland, headed north with our ultimate destination of Inverness. I had driven in the UK before, but when we got there, I realized that I had never driven a stick in the UK before. That made things a little interesting. Luckily, we were mostly on rural roads, and there wasn't too much to worry about, other than the occasional bad driver. Get out of the road, you wanker! We were driving north through the highlands. Made a little stop here in Glencoe. Glencoe is also known as the Weeping Glen. And it's also home to where uh, a group of a Scottish clan was wiped out by a murderous English king. Now we are in the heart of the highlands in a town called Glenfinnan. Glenfinnan is home to a famous train bridge. The train bridge is the same train bridge that Harry Potter took on his way to Hogwarts. Yup, we drove an hour out of the way to see this bridge, right before our last stop at Scotland's most famous lake. The last stop on our tour of the Highlands is Urquhart Castle on Loch Ness. No sign of the Loch Ness Monster today, but Scotland was far from a disappointment. And it's from here, on the banks of the famous Loch Ness, that we say goodbye from the United Kingdom.
We are in the heart of the highlands. <laughs> okay, hold on. What are you doing? No, jump up and go Bond, James Bond. Oh, well you didn't see oh. that part. Yeah, I thought that was obvious. Okay, so duck down again. Along the way, we're driving by lots of locks. I guess this is a lock. Uh, we have arrived at the legendary Sterling Castle. With okay. sweeping views of the highland. Oh no. Yeah, okay. Right, <laughs> right, that's right. you. You can do that. I'm going go to ahead. do it. This is for you, Tiff. Touching stray cats. <laughs> the area that's called the Weeping Glen. It is the home to. Uh, it was home to a, a, a. I don't know. A place. Freedom! 